Great. I just wanted to remind you all that you still have the helmets on, which is great. And if there were seat belts, I would recommend to put them on now. <clears throat> okay. Energy can be transformed to or from other forms of energy, while the total amount of energy is always the same. It does not change. Now, my daughter drew this picture to me. It's filled with energy and love. <clears throat> now, you might think that that energy is gone. It's not. It's just transformed into other forms of energy. Part of it will stay in my heart forever. Now, some five billion years ago, when the Earth was made, it was also the, then was different materials were created and charged with a lot of energy. And for me, as a designer, loving working with natural materials, I would like to make a product that merged the two materials, water and stone. The reason to this is that I know from experience that these two materials are in one way uh, giving the other one the best qualities. It shows the qualities. So I thought, how can I transform a boring everyday product like a sink into an experience that might make me smile? And then I thought, <clears throat> why does sink look the way they do today? Why is it a bowl? Because in the old days you had the hot water from the fire and the cold water from the river or well. And um, to be able to mix them to the right temperature, temperature, you needed a bowl. Today we have a mixer that does that for us. So the main function today for a sink is not really mixing the right temperature of the water, it's leading the water to the drain. And then I thought, how can I lead water? And that opened up a lot of different possibilities. And I thought, if I have a round bowl and pour the water on top, it will go to the bottom before dripping off. <coughs> and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, there we are. And uh, so, I thought, how much can I squeeze this round ball before it starts dripping on the edge? This was the result. And you can see the water following the shape of the stone. Now I know what you're all thinking, that this must splash a lot. But it does not, and you have to try it to believe it, though. Water can be used for many, many things. This is really where the transformation begins. This is Torne Tresk, not very far from here. This is where the transformation goes from snow in the mountains down to water in the river. And the river runs about 520 kilometers from Tornetres down to Bottenviken. And on its way, it's roaring and wild, but also calm and silent. And it's going quite fast, but at Jukasjärvi, it slows down to perfect speed to create thick, clear ice. So at a certain point, this water, the, the temperature drops below zero degrees. And when this happens, people try, tend to do creative things with this material, because it's just a material. Ice is just a material. And for us, it's interesting to see what you can do with the material. So creative people try to find the things that are not there, to see things that cannot be seen. That's why we like to work with creative people from all over the world. We are not so interested in working with talented ice sculptors, because as we see it, we do not need another dolphin, swan or eagle, unless it's made in an interesting way, maybe. So most of the creators that come to Ice Hotel to work with us is, has never worked with snow and ice before. And that's also the reason why we gain a lot of new ideas all the time. Now, this is how we make an ice hotel. First, we pump the river and 
uh, pump them through snow cannons to make snice. It's a combination of snow and ice. And this is made in November. But in November, the ice is not thick. But in March, where we are now, actually, this is how it, this is how it looks now in Jokasjärvi. Now we're harvesting the ice. We take up about 4,000 tons of ice and we store it in huge storage houses to use it for the coming year. So, the cannons make this nice in big piles like this. We use molds like this. We put them in a row and we throw the snice on top of the molds. And then it looks like this. And it's very good to use these molds because they have many different functions. Of course, you can, while you wait for the snice to freeze, you can swing. After you have the swing break, you remove the mold, and then you have a strong structure like this, a corridor. We build about 5,000 square meters like this. Then we add the dividing walls. We add some lighting and interiors. It looks like this. There is a lot, and I mean a lot, of energy going into the material through all the work, the tears, the laughter, the frustration and love, all is put into the snow and ice. And then the building process starts. It's a fantastic feeling to be in this bubble for a couple of weeks where ideas are shared, refined, before putting into the ceiling, the walls, the sculptures, the interiors. And of course, after a 12-hour 12-hour hard-working day, it's nice to gain some more energy, even though it can mean very little sleep. Nature itself brings energy to the material, day and night. And it's okay to have laser vision and even strange creatures like lemmings helping us, transforming the frozen water into experiences. Different methods are used, depending on what kind of person you are. Focus in, is put in every inch of the ice hotel. More energy is gained, and even less sleep. I'm talking about energy. This is Eliane. He's head of lighting at Ice Hotel. And uh, Eliane puts lots and lots of cables and electricity into the ice hotel, but he also spreads a lot of warm energy around him, because he's that kind of person. Once you finish a room, it's filled with joy, relief, and quite often tears. And boom! All of a sudden, in mid-December, the great ephemeral art project is ready to meet its guests, and it can look in an infinite way all the different creators have done different things, and there is just no end of how that can look. Now, it happens that you encounter abstract art once in a while. And that's okay. You see abstract art, you don't maybe not understand it. And it can create some frustration. But stay with that feeling for a while, because frustration can actually lead into something good. I once got the question if what we did was design or art. To me, design always has a function. Art does not have to have a function. So I thought I wanted to make a bench that has both. So where the pieces are put close together, it has a function where you can sit. And the more you spread out the distance, the more uncomfortable it gets. And in the end, it's just an object, art. You can also transform the river itself into an experience. You just gather some friends, get some shovels. You do a big circle and cut a line, and you put a boat motor there, and you lay on your back on the big spinning ice wheel and look at the stars. <laughs> Transformation is happening all the time, but you don't see it from day to day. But over time, we do see the change. And when you see signs like this, you know that the melting process has really started. And the sun speeds up this process a lot, and we do actually see this change from day to day. The ice moves, shifts, and bends. 
The sun spring speeds it up even more. And the ceiling opens up and let the sun in. Eliana's cables are removed. And everything that's put into the material is melting and going back into the river. And one can wonder what happens with all this energy that we know cannot disappear if we start in Yukasjärvi, 200 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, and it slowly spreads out. And it meets other creative ideas, fears and frustration from other parts of our world. And hopefully, this will spread and give a tiny push in the right direction. Thank you.